Welcome to section 20 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing Neisseria. This video will provide overview information on both Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea. You can see both of these organisms right here. This scene will take place in a chocolate factory with a bunch of knives. As you can see, this Oompa Loompa guy is standing below several knives. Knife sounds like Neisseria, so it will be our symbol for Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Before we go any further, take note of the pink and red background. Just like how we used purples and blues in our gram-positive videos, we'll be using pinks and reds in our gram-negative videos. So Neisseria is a gram-negative organism. Because this is a chocolate factory, we figured we'd make it more obvious by adding a bowl of chocolate to the image. Notice that two pieces of candy suspended right next to each other are being dipped into the chocolate bowl. This is to help you remember that Neisseria has a diplococcus morphology. Let's look at a gram stain so you can see what I'm talking about. This is a gram stain of Neisseria. You can see many of the organisms inside of the cell right here. Notice that the organism stains red or pink, which is why it's a gram-negative organism. Also notice that the bacteria are circular or cocci shaped and that they form little pairs right next to each other. This is why Neisseria are classically described as gram-negative diplococci. Now notice that we've added this Wonka guy to the scene with a very prominent hat. We've been using hats in our other videos to represent meningitis, so we thought a very prominent tall hat would work well for Neisseria meningitidis. So Neisseria meningitidis is one of the species of the Neisseria genus. You are probably wondering why there was a big cliff to the left of the Wonka guy. Well, this is because his chocolate factory is in a top secret location. He only allows a few people to come to his factory, and they have to travel up in the sky by using this gondola, and then they have to have a golden ticket to get inside of his factory. Gondola sounds kind of like gonorrhea, so it will be our symbol for Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea is the other species of the Neisseria genus that you need to be familiar with for step one. Now let's continue discussing some of the shared features of these two species. Notice that we've shown another Oompa Loompa guy towards the back, as well as another tray of chocolate. The chocolate candy and chocolate factory should help you remember that Neisseria grows on chocolate agar. This is an image of chocolate agar. As you can see, it has a distinct brown appearance and looks kind of like chocolate. Chocolate agar is simply heated blood agar, which contains lysed red blood cells. Some of the components in blood agar prevent the growth of Neisseria. However, if blood agar is heated to become chocolate agar, then these components become inactive, which allows Neisseria to grow. Going back to the image, we can see that as the same Oompa Loompa opens his mouth to eat the chocolate, his big prominent lips stick out. Lips sounds like lipooligosaccharide, so the taste testing Oompa Loompa with big lips should help you remember that Neisseria contains lipooligosaccharides present in the outer membrane of the cell wall. Lipooligosaccharides act as strong endotoxins that cause sepsis and shock. This is an image of the bacterial cell wall of gram-negative organisms. You can see that we've zoomed up on this part of the cell wall right here. This is the inner membrane, and this is the outer membrane. This image shows lipooligosaccharides embedded in the outer membrane. However, the concept is the same, except that Neisseria contains lipooligosaccharides. So the lipooligosaccharide of Neisseria would look kind of like these structures on the outer membrane of the cell wall. Okay, moving on, notice that we've shown the chocolate in packages towards the front of the image. As you can see, the packages are of various shapes and sizes. This, in conjunction with a large prominent pili over Wonka's head, should help you remember that the pili of Neisseria display antigenic variation. So pillars for pili, and packages of various shapes and sizes for antigenic variation. Antigenic variation just means that the pili are structurally altered through frequent genetic variation. Antigenic variation of pili occurs in both Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Therefore, vaccines against this target are limited and have been ineffective. This is partly why the scientific community has yet to develop a good vaccine for Neisseria gonorrhea. However, other targets have been developed for Neisseria meningitidis, so there is an effective vaccine against this species. We'll talk more about this in the next two videos. For now, just recognize that both species display antigenic variation of pili, and also know that pili play an important role in bacterial movement as well as attachment to host cells. In order to make these chocolate packages look extra special, we've shown an Oompa Loompa guy cutting some ribbons and decorating the packages. The scissors in his hand are here to help you remember that another virulence factor of Neisseria is IgA protease. We've used this symbol in prior videos, but recall that proteases are enzymes that cleave proteins, just like scissors cleave paper. This is an important virulence factor for Neisseria because it facilitates the survival of the organism within host cells. Now we've added another Oompa Loompa guy who's gluing the ribbons onto the packages. Glue sounds like glucose, so this should help you remember that both Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea ferment glucose. 
Now that we've added all of the Oompa Loompa characters to the scene, let's talk about what they mean. Oompa sounds like Opa, so collectively, the Oompa Loompas represent Opa proteins. Opa protein is a virulence factor that plays a role in cell attachment, similar to the pili we discussed earlier. Notice the open 9 to 5 sign above the Wonka guide that we've added to the image. This will be our symbol for C5 to C9 complement deficiency. I know, I know, 9 to 5 is backwards, but 9 to 5 is hopefully easier to remember because these are regular business hours. So C5 to C9 complement deficiency can cause recurrent Neisseria infections. Now we've added a blue necklace to the Wonka guy. This will be our symbol for oxidase positive organisms because a blue or purple color is produced during the oxidase test. Let's pull up an image of this so you can see how it works. This is an image of the oxidase test. This test is used to determine if a bacterium produces the enzyme oxidase. In this test, a disc is coated with a compound known as TMPD. When TMPD is oxidized, it becomes blue or purple. And if it's not oxidized, it remains relatively colorless. So if bacteria which produces oxidase is added to the disc, then TMPD will become oxidized and turn a blue or purple color. As you can see, the disc on the left is purple, which indicates a positive test. Okay, moving on, notice that we've added this Thayer Martin chocolate food truck to the scene. This food truck is here to sell as much chocolate as possible to new customers. The Thayer Martin sign here should help you remember that Neisseria grows in Thayer Martin agar. This is an image showing chocolate agar on the left and Thayer Martin agar on the right. As you can see, Thayer Martin agar looks very similar to chocolate agar because it's a modified version of chocolate agar that also contains selective antimicrobials. However, notice that a lot of organisms are shown on the left and only a handful of colonies are seen on the right. This is because the antimicrobials inhibit the growth of other organisms and select for the growth of Neisseria. Memorizing the specific drugs in Thayer Martin agar is actually high yield, so let's cover them now. First, notice that this Satan-looking character is inside of a van truck. Just like in other images, this is used to represent vancomycin. So, vancomycin is present in Thayer Martin agar. The nice, smiling Satan character represents nystatin. Nysatin, nystatin. So nystatin is an antifungal drug that is also present in Thayer Martin agar. Now we've added a mixer inside of the van truck to help mix up all of that yummy chocolate. Mixer sounds like polymixin, so it will be our symbol for this drug, which is also present in Thayer Martin agar. Finally, notice that the nice Satan character is selling chocolate to this little boy. If we zoom up, we can see that the chocolate bar is comprised of three separate segments, and you can also see little blue meth crystals inside of the bar. The three separate segments should make you think of tri, and the meth crystals should make you think of meth. So putting these together, we get trimetho, which stands for trimethoprim. No wonder the chocolate factory is so successful. Their secret ingredient is meth. Anyways, trimethoprim is the final antimicrobial present in Thayer Martin agar. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's do a question. A 26-year-old male presents to the office due to urethral discharge. One of his partners was recently diagnosed with a sexually transmitted infection. A swab of the discharge is sent for further laboratory analysis. The pathologist cultures the sample on a selective medium in an attempt to isolate the causal organism. Which of the following compounds is likely present in the medium? A. Cephalexin B. Penicillin C. Azithromycin D. Vancomycin or E. Caspofungin Hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient has urethral discharge and a partner who was recently diagnosed with a sexually transmitted infection. This is a pretty classic description of Neisseria gonorrhea. The selective medium described in the question stem is suggestive of Thayer Martin agar. And as we just discussed, Thayer Martin agar contains vancomycin, nystatin, polymyxin, and trimethoprim. So the correct answer is D, vancomycin. From the image, recall that the van food truck over here should help you remember that vancomycin is present in Thayer Martin agar.